chance are that if you're watching this video, you probably already own the OG Panasonic S5. You probably picked up the S5 quite recently as well. If you know you saw a really good deal on Amazon or something and you're like, oh, I need that, I need that in my life. And then you bought it and now you're sitting there thinking, oh, maybe I should have waited a little bit. So in today's video, I'll be breaking down the differences between the S5 II and the S5 and ultimately telling you whether it's actually worthwhile for you and your use case to go out and spend 2,000 more of your hard-earned clams on a new camera body. Everyone always gets so scared when I expose the sensors in my videos. It's like the camera looks better without its little shield on, okay? So starting off with the elephant in the room, and that is of course the autofocus. So if you've had the S5 for a while and you found the autofocus to be unbearable and you just can't get past it, and it's actually slowing down your workflow quite a lot, then yes, of course, the S5 II will obviously be a no-brainer for you to go out and purchase. But then again, if you're someone that shoots you know, video professionally and all that sort of stuff, and you don't use autofocus on your normal shoots, then chances are you probably won't need autofocus as much. I mean, the only reason why I would use autofocus more is when I'm filming myself like now, because I make YouTube videos and stuff, but if you're not doing that sort of thing, then chances are you probably won't see a huge benefit from having that upgraded autofocus system. Another key reason to upgrade to the S5 II from the S5, in my opinion, is the unlimited record times, because of course the S5 was limited to 30 minute record limits when shooting in 4K. So if you were someone that shoots events or let's say wedding ceremonies and stuff, then that might have held you back quite a bit. So if you have found that that record time limit has held you back with your S5, then yeah, the S5 II will definitely be a worthy upgrade. I mean, for me personally, I never record for any longer than 30 minutes at a time. So even though I do like the fact that I can record for longer than 30 minutes with the S5 II, I've not actually put it to test yet. So um, again, that's a give or take depending on your use case. Ultimately, the most important thing for any camera should be the image quality, and if we're taking that aspect alone, then there's definitely no reason to upgrade to the S5 II from the S5, because in terms of image quality, they're pretty much identical. Um, even though the cameras have different sensors due to their different AF systems, the dynamic range is the exact same, the highlight roll is the exact same, and when I've you know put both cameras side by side, I have not noticed any difference in the actual image output I'm getting from either of these bodies. So if you were someone that shoots documentary, or short films or wants to get a little bit more artsy and creative with your grades and stuff, then honestly, there's no reason to upgrade from the S5 to the S5 II because the image quality you're getting out of the S5 is still absolutely insane for the price point. And actually, on the image quality note, I'd actually give a point in favor to the original S5 because the original S5 can actually output RAW via HDMI as standard out of the box, whereas the S5 II can't do that. Which means that essentially, if you did want to get the absolute most out of these cameras, then the S5 out of the box will be the better option because you can record ProRes RAW or Blackmagic RAW if you'd like to, let's say an Atomos or a Blackmagic Video Assist, whereas the S5 II will need an upgrade key to be able to do that, which still hasn't been released yet, I don't think. So if you did like the raw workflow then the S5 is still the clear winner here. A point in favor of the S5 II, however, would be, of course, the 6K recording modes that are internal, and the S5 doesn't have any 6K internal, so that, again, would be a massive plus for the newer camera. And something that I've actually really liked using since getting this camera is the 3x2 open gate 6K recording, which means that, essentially, if I'm filming for a client and they want a uh, horizontal delivery and a vertical delivery, then I can do both using the open gate, which is essentially the full width of the sensor, and I absolutely love using that. And, of course, there's a few other things like the full size HDMI port, the active calling and all that sort of stuff, as well as the EVF upgrade, you know, so like the hardware differences could warrant you upgrading and stuff, but it just depends on how much weight you put on those sort of things. Like if the micro HDMI of the S5 has really annoyed you that much that you feel inclined to go out and spend 2,000 pounds, then go ahead, you know, of course, you've already made a decision in your head because ultimately you should be asking yourself whether these new features are something that you're seriously missing in your current setup. The Elmont ecosystem in general now is such a good one to invest in because we have all the Sigma lenses, some fantastic Panasonic lenses, and also EF lenses as well if you were inclined to adapt some glass as well. So I do think that no matter what camera you buy, either the S5 or the S5 II, or whether you wait out for the S5 IIx as well, um, then you know, you're still, your money's going somewhere good. You're definitely in a good system and you're being well looked after with all, all the specs and features that all these cameras have. Um, I mean, if you are already shooting Lumix and you want to know a little bit more about setting up your camera in the best way possible, then definitely check out some of my other videos because I've got loads of content on this channel surrounding the best way to sort of utilize and use your cameras in the most effective way for your workflow. So definitely check those out. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in my other videos.